it's been a day okay it's it's been a day yeah um a day that uh, i called it a dog ate my homework day because uh everything that could happen has happened and then some all in all bunch of just you know one thing after another one weird thing after another <sighs> adjusting to all the new things i've added to my schedule lately but it's okay <laughs> <laughs> teacher right now but that's okay okay hi all hi y'all it's your girl Kristen Kristen yeah back again with another tea for the week and before I get started if you like it and you love it and you want more of it this kind of content don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and the notification bell so you know when your girl is back on but without further ado let's get into it and we're gonna make it quick because I'm getting hot so the topic of today what are we gonna be talking about today I'm hitting on my notebook here because I took notes, so this time um, I can stay on topic. Yeah, because uh, if you haven't noticed by now, your girl can ramble on a little bit, and we don't want that. We're going to be talking about the importance of healing. Um, I definitely wanted to open this up by putting a little disclaimer out there, okay? Okay. Because <laughs> I know there's always going to be that one person when you talk about something like this, and they like think about somebody like, oh, mm, somebody needs this, somebody needs to heal. Okay. Okay. I'm going to sit pretty on both sides of the fence and let me go ahead and tell you this. Okay. First of all, no one needs to heal. Even if you are that toxic. I mean, there are ways to deal with toxic people. <sighs> hurt people do hurt people and they cause more hurt people, which in turn hurt people. So in order, if you want the world to heal, yes, healing, you know, healthy, healed people create a better world. That's why they said, if you want the world to change, start with you first. But I'm not going to say they need to heal. They don't okay, first of all, it would be a good thing. It could be a necessity for the betterment of mankind, but it is not something that they have to do. They don't have to heal. They can walk around hurt if they want to walk around hurt, okay? Uh, so, disclaimer, <laughs> you don't absolutely have to need to, like, it is not, like, by law required for you to heal, okay? You can definitely spend the rest of your life licking on pains and wounds if you so choose to. And I'm going to leave that there for now because I'm going on to it a little bit more. But I will say this. You choosing to heal and making that very significant choice to heal impacts your quality of life. And it also impacts how you react to like life in general. Uh, yeah, what I mean by that, I'm going to go into a little bit. Okay, first of all, you know, you choosing to heal, you choosing to get out of your own ways, you know, the ways that are underserving you and are not giving you the best that life has to offer. You choosing to put those ideas and stuff aside they can impact your quality of life and give you a, you know and what i mean by that they can give you a, a more elevated life and your reaction because you can either be a reactive person or a proactive person and i will do that another tea i will do a go into that a little bit more later okay i might do another tea for the week because i feel like that deserves a little bit more diving into but in short reactive is basically like if life happens to you you will make sure the world will feel it and you will make sure it is known that life happened to you. A proactive person takes those, takes everything that life gives them and literally makes the best out of it. They make the whole garden, okay? They make lemonade, Kool-Aid, all the eggs, and a whole garden of fruit out of what life gave them. They gave them poop, they gonna make fruit. <laughs> they gave them lemons, they gonna make all the juice, okay? That is a proactive person. And I say this, we all got dealt a hand, okay? We all got dealt a set of cards, okay? We all were issued a life plan before we entered Earth, okay? We were packaged up in this whole little welcome to earth package you know and it was our life plan it was like okay here's your life here's your mother here's your father here's your sister brother nanny you know nanny grammy and all that pappy they're all in here your life package here you go do with it what you will so we all got one it was a wild card you know they they threw in some things some were good some were not so good we could do without you know and we gotta make it do what it do that that's pretty much how we all got here and if anybody got here a little differently, you know, do tell, do tell. I would love to hear your origin story because the rest of us out here, just whatever cards we was dealt, we're like, yeah, it must be nice. And somebody once said this, look, if everybody could put, if everybody could put their bag of problems on the stage, 
you never know what people are going through. Would you really want to trade back, you know, each other's lives? Because you don't know what people are going through. So you may, the grass may look greener, but you don't really know if they spray painting the grass over there. Okay. I'm going to leave that there. In order to understand the importance of healing, another huge step. And again, you know, this may come for somebody, but just know, don't take it personally. Because, okay, I did not say this with you in mind. I'm just going to go ahead and say that now. Okay. Um, I did, but I didn't. One huge step you have to take is overcoming denial. I'm going to say that one more time. Overcoming denial. You're swimming deep in denial. Yes, overcoming denial. So what that means is that for those people who say, I don't have anything I need to heal from, or sorry, I don't have anything to heal from, because just you don't have to, have to, have to do it. So those who say, you know, there's nothing that I, sh that I feel like I need to heal from, that, that I feel like I should heal from, that I feel like this, you know, is a pain point for me whatsoever. And you may truly feel like that. I, I mean, you may truly feel like that. But I'm going to get into that a little bit, okay? I'm going to get into that. I'm not going to leave that hanging there. Trust me. I'm going to put a pin in it for now, though. Um, but as I said, like I said, you don't have to heal. But I will say this. The very best thing you could do for yourself, if you don't do it for anybody else, do it for yourself. Be honest with yourself. If you can't do it with anybody else, do it for yourself. And I don't mean, like, be honest. Like, you know, I do say, you know, sometimes, like, if it's non-existent, you know, fake it till you make it. Practice what you preach, you know until it becomes habit speak those things that are, are not into existence yeah that, that i still will say that but what i mean by being honest with yourself is those are things that can kind of like for the most part if you're putting some positive things in that those are things that can better you what i mean by being honest with yourself is taking those things and shining some light on those dark corners that you want it to stay dark but you know that that darkness is causing dark clouds and other people and and your quality of life as well so that means like be honest with yourself about the pains you've been suffering through Okay, about some dark histories that you may not want to readdress, address at all, or you may have tucked away. Because as long as those things are there, you're not living. You're, it's, it's, I'll say this. You're living with a chosen handicap. Okay? You're, you're choosing handicap. And I say that very, you know, because being handicapped is not, you know, it's not coming from people who are actually handicapped. But I'm saying that when you choose to be handicapped it's, it's it's a little different you know like, you know you don't you don't get the same sympathetic woes or understandings or inclusivity because people are just like you, you're choosing to cut yourself and not stitch you back or, or put a band-aid on and then you go back and recut yourself and then you want to let everybody know how hurt you are and then because you cut yourself you want to go around and ask somebody and they cut somebody else that doesn't make sense because you chose not to heal and now you're not only making it your problem you're trying to make it everybody around you's problem too Again, I'm not coming for nobody in particular. I'm just letting out some truths. If it resonated, it does. And if your inner self is saying self, you might need to look at self and have a conversation with self. That's all I'm going to say. When I say that we can all heal from something, because if you're not absolutely devoid of fault and you're absolutely perfect and you have no bad habits that you may have or underserving habits, because not they may not necessarily be bad habits, they just may be habits that keep you from living your best life, and you are like perfect and you have no issues <laughs> and you're good then this message ain't for you you know you walk in jesus okay good for you you know you're the light of the world amen for you um you know or whoever however you so desire to believe a higher being is or the perfect person on whoever walked this earth is you are that good for you okay <laughs> the bells will sing you'll hear like shiny music all around you wherever you go because you're just perfect you're just perfect you ain't got no problems but for the rest of us, the 99.9% .9 of us out here in these streets, we might, we might need to, you know, brush away some old, some old scars, you know, doctor up some old wounds around here, and whether that's relearning something, because an old, like I said, a learned skill or you know, a life lesson that taught you or something like that may start to be underserving you, it may not be serving you to the fullest potential anymore. So relearning might be the healing point. Or it could be improving upon a way of doing something. So something that you already do and just improving upon it. Or it can be like, you know, a, a thought. I mean, what I mean by that is like a school of thought, a way of thinking, a way of doing, a way of being that can be improved upon. Be honest with yourself. you got some cobwebs, some dark corners you need to put some light bulbs in. And it's, it's you'd be doing yourself a, the biggest, biggest service in this life if you just be honest with yourself. Here's a go. Okay, as long as you're living, you're learning. If you're not learning, you're not living, okay? That means you're being a fruitless tree. So if you're like, I don't need to learn anything else, I'm good, uh, you're no longer bearing fruit and you're slowly die. But for the rest of us, 
the 99.9, you know, we still got things we're learning. We still got things, and new skills and new ideas and new schools of thoughts that we're always evolving and developing every day. So that's always, and if you're always striving for the best that life can have to offer you, and you're trying to not only pour that into you, but also pour it out, then that's a process of healing in itself. Okay. So, and healing is a constant process. All right. And a rule, so a rule of thumb, if you're not living your absolute best life, and if you're not to get the bar, if you're not living your absolute best life, then there's probably room for healing. Okay. So if there's not, if everything in your life is not spot one to the T perfect, then you have areas that you can grow in. And I don't mean just like your environment. I mean, your, your well-being, yourself, how you interact with others, relationship with others, you know, the projection of you that you put out in the world. It is not at its absolute best, like shining light. And I don't mean good times, bad times. Like, the, yes, life will happen. What I mean by that is because you're not learning when life happens, when you're not evolving and becoming better when life happens. And not only becoming better in yourself, but giving, putting out better. Whatever I say to your life, I say it's, it's for me too. I, I do my best to practice what I preach. So yeah, I'm a constant. I'm a constant work in progress. As long as it's breath in my body, I'm constantly working on me. So I, I'm just putting the revelations that was given to me out here in these streets. <laughs> so and then at the end of the day, like I said, understand if you choose not to heal. And I hinted on this before, but I'm gonna stress it. If you choose not to heal, then keep in mind others can choose not to deal. So if you choose not to heal, others can choose not to deal. And that means not to deal with you. And that is their right and their choice. And it may hurt you. It may feel like you're abandoned and everything like that. But you have to keep in mind that when you're choosing to be in pain, to be a pain point, and you're spreading that around, that's a level of toxicity that not, not everybody has the time or energy for. And if you're not... And then I'm not saying that, you know, if you're in the midst of the healing process, and that, I mean, yes, some of that can come out. But again, not everybody's built for it. And it doesn't make them bad people. And it just means they were not built for your season, your of healing. They just were not meant to be for that season for you. Okay? And if that's the case, I got more. I want to share more. And no, the subject is not done. But you know I got some more tea for you. But tune in next time. We're going to finish up this one because it's going to get bad. I got some more good juice. But we're going to wrap up here for now. So always remember, my kind of design, design your own kind of life. And never forget to dream. Bye guys, love you.